In Notion, you can use formulas to prioritize your tasks automatically. Let's explore two approaches for doing so. And each of those approaches is going to use the if function. So let's take a look at the if function. If you go to the Notion formulas cheat sheet at notion.vip slash formulas, you'll find the if function. And you'll see that it takes three arguments. The first argument is an expression that returns the value of true or false. And typically that expression is going to compare two values. And then the second argument is the operation to perform if that expression returns true. So the third argument is the operation to perform if that first argument returns false. So like I said, that first argument is typically going to compare two values. And to compare those two values, you're typically going to use comparison operators. So up at the top of this cheat sheet, there's a little sub menu with the option of comparison operators, which you'll click and you'll see a list of notions, common comparison operators. So you can test whether two values are equal, unequal, greater, whether one's greater than the other, whether one's greater than or equal to the other, whether one's less than the other, or whether one is less than or equal to the other. So you're likely familiar with both of these. Let's take a look at a simple example of their application. So in this little sandbox area here, we have a little dummy database and within the formula property, we can type our if keyword to start the if function. And the first argument is gonna be an expression that evaluates to true or false. So we'll just do two equals two. So two, and then the equals operator is going to be two equal signs and then our other two. So this expression, of course, is going to evaluate to true. The second argument is the operation to perform if that first argument is true, which of course it is. So we'll just return the string yes. And then the third argument is the operation to perform if that first argument is false. So we'll just say no. So when we confirm, we can see that we have two yeses here because in each iteration of the function, it's comparing two to two. And of course, two equals two. But typically for these values, you're going to be referencing other properties. So in our case, we can reference the item property with the prop function. And then we might compare that property against the string item one. So we're testing whether the item property equals the string item one. And when we confirm, we have a yes and we have a no because item one is equal to the string item one. Item two is not. If we were to change our one to a two, then our yes and no have switched. So in Notion, a checkbox property is really just a representation of true or false. So if a checkbox is true, or if it's checked, then it's true. If it's unchecked, it's false. So we don't actually need a comparison operator within this first argument. We can just reference the property. And that's going to return true or false if it's a checkbox property. So when we confirm, we can see we have a yes and a no because we have a checked and an unchecked. If we were to uncheck, this is going to change to no. And if we were to check this, it's going to change to yes. So that is our if function. Let's see how we can use it to automatically prioritize our tasks. So like I said, we're going to be taking two approaches here. And the first approach is going to use the Eisenhower matrix. So if you're unfamiliar with the Eisenhower matrix, what you do is for each task, you're going to specify whether it's urgent or not urgent and whether it's important or not important. So if the task is urgent and important, you're going to do it. The Eisenhower matrix is going to return the action of do. If it's important but not urgent, then you schedule that task. If it's not important but urgent, you delegate it. And then if it's not important and not urgent, you eliminate it.
You'll start with a table of tasks, and that table will include two checkbox properties, one for important and the other for urgent. So, of course, for each task, you'll check the important checkbox if it's important and the urgent checkbox if it's urgent. And then you'll have a formula property that returns the action to take according to whether important is checked and whether urgent is checked. So let's write that formula. In Notion, it's often easier to compose your formulas in a code block rather than in the actual formula property composer. That's going to allow you to insert line breaks and indentations that make it easy to understand exactly how the formula works. So we're going to start with our if function and we first want to test whether the important checkbox is checked. So we'll make a reference to the important property. And remember, because this is a checkbox, it's going to return either true or false. We don't have to compare two values using comparison operators. So that's the first argument of our if function. Now we want to know if the urgent property is checked. So we're actually going to use another if function within the second argument of our top level if function. So we'll start with another if function and this time reference urgent. So now we're writing the second argument of our nested if function. And so what we're writing here is the operation to take if important is checked and if urgent is checked. And in that case, we want to return do. And then the third argument of this nested if function is going to be the action to take if important is checked, but urgent is unchecked, in which case we want to schedule. So then we can close our nested if function, and that's going to conclude the second argument of our top level if function. And now we can compose the third argument of our top level if function. So now we're saying if important is unchecked. So if important is unchecked, then we once again want to test urgent. So we will once again reference the urgent property. And then the second argument of this second nested if function is going to tell us what to do if important is unchecked but urgent is checked, in which case we want to delegate. And then the third argument of this nested if function is going to be what to do if neither important nor urgent is checked, in which case we want to eliminate. And then we can conclude that if function and then conclude the outer if function. Now when you include these line breaks and indentations within the code block, you're going to need to paste that formula within the address bar of your browser to eliminate those breaks and those indentations before you can paste it into your formula property. So I've just done that up top. And then you can paste it within your composer window and inevitably you are going to encounter errors just as I've done here and it's actually helpful for you to see the uh, the errors that I experienced here so this is saying property not found property important I've left a T out of this so when I add that T I can confirm and here we have our actions to take according to which boxes are checked so if we uncheck the boxes then the action to take is going to change. So let's move on to the second approach, which is the Marie matrix. And this I have named for the very well known Notion consultant Marie Pullen. And rather than evaluating each task's urgency and importance, it's going to evaluate the effort required for the task and the impact of the task. And each effort and impact can be either low, medium, or high. So we're not working with checkboxes here, we're working with select properties. So you're gonna to wanna to add two select properties to your table of tasks. And for each of those properties, you're gonna to wanna to include those three options, low, medium, or high. And in this marine matrix, the lower the effort and the higher the impact, then the, then the higher the priority. And conversely, the higher the effort and lower the impact, 
then the lower the priority. And Marie knew, uses these fun series of emojis to represent these various levels of priority. So when you compose your notion formula, sometimes it's easy rather than creating the entire formula within one formula property, you can break it up and then reference those other properties. So I am going to display some hidden properties here. So these formula properties make their own calculations and then this final formula priority references the results of those calculations. So we have an effort priority and an impact priority and what this does is it assigns a numeric value to low, medium, and high to effort and a numeric value to low, medium, and high for impact as well. So for the effort priority what we're going to do is we are once again going to use our if function and this time we're going to reference the effort property. And because it's not a checkbox, we are going to need to use a comparison operator. So we first want to know, is effort equal to low? So that's the first argument of this if function. And if it is equal to low, we want to return a one. And then if it's not equal to low, we want to test if it's equal to medium. So we're going to use another if function. And if it is equal to medium, then we want to return a 2. And if it's not, then we know it's not low and it's not medium, so we can return a 3 and then we'll close out that nested if function and we'll close out the parent function and up here out of view I'm going to paste it into my address bar and copy it and then we can take it down here to our formula property and confirm so now we have our effort priority that returns the numeric, the numeric value. So for the impact priority, it's going to be very similar. We can just edit the formula we've already written, but change effort to impact. And because impact corresponds, the higher impact corresponds with a higher priority, we want to switch our one and our three here. So then we can copy that, eliminate those line breaks and indentations, and there we go. We have our effort priority and then our impact priority. And then we have another formula property that's going to add the effort priority and the impact priority. So that's just simply using the addition operator, the plus sign between those two property references. And confirm. So we have our effort priority, our impact priority, and then we have our total priority that adds them together. So we don't need to see these properties actually, we just need to reference their value. So I'm going to hide these properties and then we want to create our final priority property that displays the emojis. So what we're going to do is use a series of if functions and we first want to know does the total priority return a 2 because that's the lowest option. So we will start our if function and then we'll make a reference to total priority. And we want to know if it equals 2. So we'll use that equal comparison operator. And if it does equal 2, then we want it to return our flashing light emojis which we'll put within quotation marks because it's a text string. That's the second argument of our if function. And so the third argument is going to be if it's not equal to 2, in which case we want to test if it's equal to 3. So we can actually just copy the first example of that test and change the 2 to a 3. And if it is 3, then we want to display our fire emojis. 
And then now we're writing the third argument of our nested if function. And we actually want to do another nested if function to test if total priority is equal to four. And if it is equal to four, we're going to display our stars. And if it's not, we need to use yet another if function to see if it's equal to five. And so if it is equal to five, we want to display our coffee cups. And if it's not, we know it's not two, it's not three, it's not four, and it's not five, then the only other option is going to be a six, which is going to be our sleepy emoji. So then we can close out our most nested if function, and then we can close out each of the other nested if functions, and then finally the parent if function. And with that, we can copy, paste into the URL bar, copy it again, and then come into our priority property, paste, and confirm. And there we have a representation of the marine matrix. And then you can support, you can sort the table by this priority property so that you have your highest priority items on top. If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description to a text post on Notion VIP that you can follow along with this video as you practice these strategies on your own.